At the beginning of Parshat Matos Masai, the Torah teaches us the laws of oaths and how those oaths can be nullified. And then, immediately afterwards, it returns to the story of Midian, to the war that had to be waged against Midian to fulfill the command of Tzrora to Midianim, to take revenge against what Midian had done to the Jewish people. When the soldiers returned from battle, Elazar Kohen gave instructions to the, the warriors of how to kosher the utensils that they had captured. Those instructions are given now. And yet the Ramban asks a famous question. He says that this wasn't the first war that the Jews had waged, nor the first set of spoils they had taken. That first war was the war against Sihon and Og. And there, when they took the spoils, there were no instructions of how to kosher it. Why did the Torah wait? According to the Ramban, the answer is because the land of Sichon and Og was always supposed to be part of the inheritance of the Jewish people. And therefore, it fell under the category of things that belonged to the Jews, even those things that weren't kosher. And koshering, as a result, was not necessary. Whereas the land of Midian, that was not supposed to be part of the Transjordan possession of the Jewish people. That only came into our possession because of this battle. And therefore, those things that were captured had a different status. They had to be koshered. That answer of the Ramban, fascinating as it is, has been the subject of considerable discussion and debate among later writers. And one alternative suggestion that has been offered by a contemporary Rav Rav Tzvi Hirsch Yair, originally from Europe, who then settled and was a Rav in New York, was offered in his book, Chamudei Tzvi, where he suggests actually that the difference between these two battles and the reason why koshering is only mentioned in the second battle and not the first, is because of the fact of the way the spoils were brought. When you look at the story of the battle against Midian, the warriors brought all of the utensils as a collective before Elazar Kohen. Elazar at that point understood that th some of those utensils must have been used recently within 24 hours and therefore on a biblical level were prohibited requiring on a biblical level the koshering process. Whereas with the earlier battle of Sichon and Og, then those spoils were brought individually. They weren't brought as a totality, which means that very likely there were utensils that weren't used within 24 hours. There were utensils that didn't require koshering. And that's the reason, explains Rav Yair, that these instructions waited until the second battle, the battle with Midian. After the battle of Sichon and Og, we find no reference to the spoils being collected and brought to a single location. But after the battle of Midian, there it is mentioned. And that is a situation in halachic terms of Iqba Isura where we know definitively that there must be some things that were prohibited requiring koshering, and that's why the koshering occurs now.